Welcome to Mega Path Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and today let's talk The Walking Dead Season 7, Episode 14, called The Other Side. I forgot what the episode was called for a second there, but uh, all right, first thing first, I want to get this out of the way, and then I want to talk about what I did like about this episode. Maybe a couple of other cons, I forget what I wrote down, but the one thing that I think this entire season primarily suffers from is having these hour-long episodes and only about 35 to 40 minutes of it actually being of substance and we get these filler scenes. Now I'm not talking about character development. Character development is absolutely fine. I think that's extremely necessary. I know a lot of us could say, oh, the Ben stuff and the, the Richard stuff, that's all filler and whoop de whoop de whoop but we need to know these characters. We need these introductions. We need these storylines to play out so that way we can see how it affects the other characters who are staying in the show. Ben might not have been a necessary character for Ben's sake, unfortunately, and you need characters like this, but Ben is building up Ezekiel's story, so it's not really wasted. Some scenes, sure, yeah, you could trim it back and play around with it, but this episode uh, suffered from that as well, I can tell. And to, to give you guys a perfect example, imagine the scene, or remember the scene, imagine, <laughs> remember the scene with Enid and that savior, and she's trying to distract the savior so he doesn't go down and find Daryl and Maggie or whatever. This whole idea here, I really wish they just wrote it out of the script. It's false, false tension that we as an audience know it's never going anywhere. It was, so it's they write it to, to have tension there, but there's just no tension. I wasn't on the edge of my seat. I knew nothing was going to happen, you know? I thought it was happening so they can have that conversation with Maggie and Daryl, and that works. But the way it was filmed, it was filmed as if they wanted the audience to be on the edge of their seat the entire time. But my point is, the stuff with Enid and the Savior, that's not character development. That's just filler in this episode. We could have taken that out, and it wouldn't change the episode. It probably would have made it better if we took that out and added more of Daryl and... Um, Maggie together. I thought that scene was awesome. I've been asking for that moment since episode 9, episode 8. I've always wanted that moment with Daryl and Maggie, and I'm not annoyed that they waited. I'm actually quite happy they waited and with the way they played it out, where uh, he, she didn't bring it up, she didn't mention it. Okay, that's fine, that's cool, I like that. But then he couldn't even look her in the eyes. And I really feel like that was a powerful moment. But I also feel like there was a missed opportunity to make that an unforgettably powerful moment. You know what I mean? There was just something there where it was like, yeah, that was a, that was a raw emotional moment. But it kind of could have been, mm, get rid of this stuff with the Savior and Enid. Give us some of that. And I, I made a comment in the Facebook group that I could watch a whole episode of Simon and Gregory, and I mean it. I still mean it. I could watch a whole episode of them talking, not just them, you know, doing incredibly interesting stuff. Just talking. <laughs> so basically, I love their scenes together. Uh, and that's all they did was talk and discuss stuff. But the actors are doing such an incredible job with those two characters that I freaking love it. Daryl and Maggie had a nice uh, subtle moment where she gives him food, I think is what it was, and she walks away and she pauses for a moment as if she wants to say something or maybe even compose herself and then before she enters and that's where he looks over at her. I love those little things, you know, and that's a scene you could have said, oh, that's a filler scene, but I like those moments. I like those subtle moments and that stuff, even for comic fans, we don't get some of those moments or it's hard to do in the comic where you see them just living... Uh, in that way, we get comic material stuff, but uh, I know I'm I'm flubbing this bad, but just that scene of Daryl outside at night in the hilltop, it's a relaxing night, no stress, no traumas going on, they're eating in the trailer, he's outside as if he doesn't feel welcome inside, he doesn't feel because of his guilt a part of the da dun dun, -dun you know, but visually, just seeing it, this, there's something there that you can do in TV that you just can't do in a comic book, and I really enjoyed that moment there. Now, the false tension, I wrote that down. Yeah, this is another negative, but um, I think they could have rewrote it totally different. We didn't need any of that. We had false tension so much so that, and I know it's not just a coincidence, they wrote it specifically for us as an audience to think that, um, what's his name? 
I forget his name. Uh, Simon's, yeah, Simon is coming there for Daryl and Maggie. Now, before I thought it was something uh, different in the prediction video, and I, I just didn't put two and two together. And then before the episode aired, I was like, I'm such an idiot. I'm so dumb. He's coming there for the doctor. Duh. Negan just killed the doctor. But we don't ever see Simon go into the sanctuary, so that kind of uh, messed me up a little bit. And, uh, no, have we? I don't remember now, but my point is, I was connecting Simon with an outpost and wasn't thinking about the sanctuary, but, uh, so we know he's coming there, and then Simon's like, oh, I'm here for somebody, get your pointing finger out, and it's, and then it goes to a commercial break, and again, it's this false tension, it, it, I will always bring this up with TV shows, especially TV shows that I love. This shit in Hollywood, they got to stop. There's a lot of things they do in Hollywood that they need to just stop and forget about it. And it's stuff like this, you know, uh, building up the false tension, directing it, filming it as if it's going to something's going to pop off in that uh, that basement area. It's just nonsense. We didn't need any of it. I would have preferred a bigger, more elaborate um, converse, conversation with Maggie and Daryl. I would have been fine. I felt like uh, that scene was suffocating a little with how quick it was, and they could have let it breathe a little more. Uh, with Sasha and Rosita, Rosita was a huge bitch for most of this. That Some of it even feels forced. Uh, man, it feels like it's a negative, but hold on, I'm getting to a positive. Some of it feels like it's a bit forced. I really wish they would have done something where maybe it was the actress, where she was just like a smug bitch. She just had this look on her face like just an ass. But then with her and Sasha had a nice moment, and I liked it. I liked that a lot. Now, I can't help but feel that Sasha has a wasted moment coming up, and I'm going to save this for the end. I want to do a comic spoiler here because I think all of us comic fans have an idea where this is about to go. And hopefully, it doesn't mean what I think it means because if it does, ouch, for All Out War in Season 8, ouch. Comic fans are not going to be happy about something coming up, but we'll get to that in a second. So... They build up a nice conversation with Sasha and uh, Rosita, but I just really wish they would have tweaked a little bit building up to that. Like, Rosita's attitude just made it seem like a bitch, an intolerable bitch. This whole time, up until that point, that conversation turned it around where, and this is what I mean by tweaking, that conversation turned it around where I was like, I, I felt for her in the moment. But then there was so much other stuff where I'm like, but you're still a huge bitch. I don't care what you say. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're still a massive ass. Uh, but then so Sasha gives up her own life. And uh, I understand what she means. It's not your time. Whoop to boop. You could do more. But I was missing a moment that made her believe. Why could she? Why? Why her? Why could she do more? You guys, what if you don't succeed because you only went in? You guys made this deal that both of you were going to do this. So both of you go and do this. Or couldn't Rosita be the one to go in? I don't know. <laughs> I'm a Sasha fan. What can I say? Rosita, I didn't mind her. You know what I mean? I wasn't really a huge fan, but uh, it's just not my type of character. I'm not saying it's a bad character, just not my type of character. But anyway. I just, I missed that moment, you know, I know they shared something and she opened up and whoop de whoop so maybe that was the moment and it just didn't hit me as much, but regardless, I still like the choice they did, watch my back, da 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 da, and then she uh, uh, locked the gate up, locked her out, I think that's what it was, she picked the lock and then went in and locked the gate, and then uh, went in the building, and her plan is to assassinate Negan, now she has no idea where Negan's at at this point, except for on the walkie talkie, they said he's going to be with uh, his wives essentially, I believe that's what they said, but uh, the map that was written out, did it have the location? I mean, it just seems like such a failed mission. Like, this has failed from the start. It seems like such a poorly executed plan. Uh, but with that said, I'm dying to go into the end. No, you know what? I didn't talk about the end, but I'm dying to go into more of Sasha's stuff, but I want to put a warning. So let's talk about the end. So Sasha runs away. I feel like I'm missing some more... Uh, hardcore moments, but there was a lot of back and forth that I really liked. Let me put that out there. Uh, a lot had to do with the Simon, the Gregory, but okay, so the very end, Sasha's running away, she's crying, and then we see the silhouette of Daryl Dixon, but then it pauses, it hesitates a moment, and it doesn't show him, and then you think, oh, that was clever, because Daryl has the crossbow, and so does Dwight. They both have crossbows. Ah, that's a nice one. So we see in the previews for next week, Daryl's with Rick and them, and they already went on the run, and whoop de whoop So that means Dwight is the one in the silhouette with Rosita. And this is what I'm saying, oh, don't do that, because they have this connection with Dwight and Daryl, 
and I've been waiting for it for two seasons now, you know, not rushing it, but waiting for the time it's gonna it's gonna happen. But now it feels like there's gonna have that scene between Rosita and Dwight. You know what I mean? Where I'm going there? Alright. We're gonna go into some comic book sensitive material here for spoiler, spoiler wise. So if you don't wanna hear that, you should probably leave this now. It just has to do with uh character death in the comic book that might happen on the show. Okay, so spoiler warning here. If you are leaving, thanks for coming by. Hit that like button button hit the subscribe button if you're new we're gonna talk about the walking dead every single episode sometimes a lot sometimes a little bit but at least every single episode so uh three two one into the spoiler content right now in the comic book the sanctuary is attacked by the survivors all right i almost said the saviors so the survivors attack the sanctuary holly i'm not gonna go into all the details but she sacrifices herself making it inside to do damage that's as simple as we're gonna go and then the survivors have to flee because there's so many walkers that are going to be overrun so then uh holly gets in there she gets captured by negan negan thinks that holly is rick's woman so he takes holly back to alexandria and he offers her up as uh truth as peace you know here here's one of your people let's talk this out they reveal that she's a walker she was killed and then she bites Denise well as you know a lot of this stuff is missing right now because uh, they're at war when this happens Denise is dead I mean the whole scheme is just remixed a lot but what we have now is Sasha most likely getting this death. Now, if they build this up and Sasha doesn't get this death, I'll tell you right now, I will most likely be disappointed. Unless they do something incredible, then fine. I'll eat, I'll eat my own words. I'm fine with that. But it, it seems like we can, by the casting call for Star Trek and by the fact that she's in the perfect position to get Holly's death, I think it's good to say, and Holly was with Abraham. Holly was, Sasha is the the TV version of Holly because she was the other girl and Rosita was whatever. You follow me? So it looks like she's definitely set up to get Holly's death. And I'm just, I'm happy that we might be getting it. I think I'll be happier once we get it because I think it's an awesome moment. But here's the problem. We didn't kick off with a war yet. So if one of the survivors goes to kill Negan, would that kick off the war? Because Rick doesn't know anything about it. Rick has nothing to do with it. Sasha most likely will reveal that. If they keep her alive long enough to return her, you know what I mean, as a walker, she's going to tell them, listen, you know, they have nothing to do with it. The hilltop doesn't have anything to do with it. I came here to kill you because you killed my man. I think this creates a conflict with Negan because what if she's telling the truth? You know what I mean? Then you're going to kill all these people who are delivering services and goods and supplies for you and it's going to be a whole fiasco so i'm thinking that uh, this might be part of the finale i do not believe this is going to happen in the next episode in 15 not at all no chance at all but i do believe that it's going to this might be the situation to kick start of war rick might be pulling his people and this is going to be the moment where negan says rick i don't know what's going on here but so and so tried to kill me and this has been the number how many times that one of your people has tried to kill me something's got to change da, 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 and he gives her the um and he gives rick the girl and then once he reveals the hood then shit kicks off you know i think at that point i would be happy with the outcome playing out just like that even if it's predictable because it's from the comic, but I don't care. I think it's such a great scene. It's an epic and iconic death, and filmed right, I think that's an honorable death for the actress playing Sasha to take. I think that's one of the best things. As a fan, that's one of the things that I think would be awesome is getting iconic and epic deaths on The Walking Dead. Like, just as a fan, I just, like, Glenn, man, I know it must be it must be shitty to not work be uh, on the show still, you know what I mean? But at the same time, you got one of the most memorable deaths in TV history, you know what I'm saying? On one of the, the highest rated shows in TV history. Man, for a career? How can you knock that? Even if you're sad, you're no longer on the show. So I think that's a great death for Sasha to get, but the stuff around it is where I'm starting to be like, I don't know if I'm going to like that. I don't know if I'm going to like... Rosita being the angle for Dwight to go to Rosita and say, you know what, I'm not quite happy with uh, Negan at the moment. Maybe I can be of assistance, you know? And they did set that up earlier, if you think about it. It was pretty clever. We had, they laid it on thick with Daryl and Dwight, and maybe that's why I took the bait. But I also think there's such a powerful dynamic between two people that hate each other's guts, having to come together, you know what I mean? Bite the bullet 
and just be in the same space, hating each other's guts. And I'm I'm a little disappointed they didn't go the route of arguing over keeping uh, the vest or the crossbow. I think that would have been a nice little banter, but as serious characters, I don't know. It just sounds fun, but um, um, I am a little disappointed that if they don't go the direction with uh, Dwight and Daryl. But if they, it looking like they set it up with Rosita so far, she might be the introduction because. They had the moment where uh, Dwight and Rosita in season five on the train tracks, or was it six? Yeah, six. And then in uh, season seven, where they first came to the uh, Alexandria, and he's like, Rosita, <laughs> you know? So they set up a little bit with Rosita and Dwight. But I'm curious to see what direction that takes. And I'm going to shut up now. Maybe we'll do a quick prediction video. Uh, I'm going to post it right up behind this. I would love to know what you guys think about this episode. If you want a, a summary of my final thoughts, I like it. I enjoy it. I think the the biggest thing that hurts The Walking Dead is the budget, and I think it shows. At this point, I'm just going to be honest. I think the the budget clearly shows um, that it's restricting some of uh, the structure, the flow, and what they got to do. And what I mean by the structure is because they're at the hilltop and because they're telling this one part in this episode, you need scenes like Enid and the Savior to fill out the runtime because... Uh, you need you can't show Rick and them, you know, because they're not in, involved in this episode because of the structure. And I strongly think that has to do with the budget. It, that just doesn't make sense from a creative standpoint to say, eh, we're going to go over here, you know, this week. And then in three weeks, we'll go over to the kingdom. And then it just doesn't make sense that way. You know, the old fashioned blended style is is what I would have preferred. But that said, thoughts and opinions in the comment box. I enjoyed it. I wasn't blown away. All right, I'm done talking. It's your turn. Subscribe now.